that story of uh, using the dragon and explaining uh, the pixel resolution, that is de facto what I, that's how I explain uh, subtools and also how many polygons your model needs to be uh, to students. I think it's a really good simple way to get the point kind of across and I definitely recommend you sharing that to any of your students. Okay. So it's real simple to add a subtool. You just, in the subtool palette, you're going to use append. And I'm going to append a sphere 3D. And then I'm going to select it. Now, by default, symmetry is not on. And if you're brand new, this is going to cause you a problem because we've barely even talked about symmetry. We've just assumed it's always on. So if you're brand new to ZBrush, make sure you go into Transform, Activate, and turn X on. Or you just press X on your keyboard. If you've ever lost it, especially if you're new and you lost symmetry, remember, you can accidentally hit X instead of Z. If you're trying to do Control uh, Z or you're trying to undo or some programs, you just press Z. Just press X, you get it back. Totally separate piece of geometry. It's cool for hair because hair is so separate and it allows you to keep your polygon counts uh, different. And uh, you can use brushes a little bit freer. Things like a uh, snake hook. Uh, should we give him a mullet? I haven't sculpted a mullet in a long time. Let's pull the mullet around the front. <laughs> I am feeling this mullet. I am beyond grateful that there are not pictures of me back in this era. Okay, symmetry is off. I'm going to switch to the move brush. Sorry, my keys are getting stuck. Okay. So it's its own piece. I can divide it. I can do whatever I want. And it's pretty cool to make happen. Yeah, I'm going to get to extraction next. That's my goal, Corbin. Uh, so one way that I do hair, clay buildup. And it's a matter of coming into stroke, lazy mouse. And I'm going to set this lazy step down, like 0 0.03. And you see I get cleaner strokes. And I just, I'll press Alt, let go of Alt, press Alt, let go of Alt. And uh, it's recommended you start from the, the base. Um, let's turn symmetry off. Start from the crown. Where you work your way back to the base. But it's, it's a beautiful rhythm to just kind of get into and start to see what you can expose, what you can start to do. and really loose strokes. So this is the advantage of separate subtools. The other thing I would recommend is uh, the slash brush. But really, this is just my stroke that I'm doing this with right now. Nothing special. It's not like that uh, dynamic hair I showed. That was uh, very hard to figure out. Years, in fact. I got to track back to get the feathering, the layering to be right. So that's fine, right? Okay. 
Cool. One more brush. I wanted to show you slash four, but I think they took it out. Which one was it? Hmm. Let me see if I can find it real quick. If I can't, no harm. All right, I'll just show you guys that one later. That got changed. Oh, slash four is actually mine. But anyways, I'll show you, I'll, I'll try to make something else to show you guys how that one works. But so hair like this, sub tools, this is a great use for it. I can get a lot more going on uh, with this. Now, the other use for sub tools, let me go through my notes real quick. The other use for sub tools, and we'll get into this more in the next demonstration, is all the way at the bottom, and it's this extract. Whenever uh, Pixelogic introduces a feature, they always try to put a couple of extra add-ons to it, and extract was one of those. So subtools became possible, and then how, how can we use subtools? Extract became that next element. So extract is, uh, is really designed in some levels for something as basic as clothing. You just press shift, sorry, control, mask out a shirt, and it's easy from there, right? I mean, this is, if you've been following ZBrush, this is a, a no-brainer. But then you'll also know that you can sometimes get some stripping, striping, and some craziness. You know, maybe. It depends on your algorithm and resolution and stuff. So you press extract, you preview it, and adjust the thickness. So that thickness was too much. I'm going to set it to 0 0.005. And then if it's okay, you accept it. You accept it, it creates a totally new subtool. That subtool is masked, so you control, click, and drag to clear it. Turn symmetry on. And then you've got this other piece. This is still amazing to me because if you're doing a zombie there is no cooler easier faster way to get ragged shirts than this there is none so a real big significant uh, use for it but it's more than just stuff like this you can also do it for hair I'm gonna turn the eye icon off you can do things like, say, mask out strips of hair. Extract. Hmm. Maybe we just need to pull one out. Okay. I'm going to accept that. Select it. Control, click, and drag. Make sure you turn symmetry on. And then the really cool thing happens when you use the move brush, or transpose, sorry. You can drag an action line out, press control, and add another one. So we're going to cover this in a lot more detail because you can imagine for hard surface this is essential. But I could go in, control, select that middle dot, middle dot, middle dot, you know, middle dot, and I got a whole bunch of these little strands that are all part of, all part of one subtool. I can separate those guys now by going into polygroups and saying auto group. Turn symmetry off. We can go into mask, auto masking, Sorry, mask by polygroup, 
and then we have these little tiny pieces that we can select move them around inflate and depending on what you're doing with hair this can get quite you can pull out these little tiny pieces quite quickly but again this is going to be very useful when we get into the hard surface stuff 